while I was in New York City for six years, I did about 18 musical reviews. I did some off-Broadway work, and but I loved the musical review form. And uh, in, in the review form, you know, you do a lot of funny songs and funny characters, and you can create a lot, which is really nice. And um, uh, I got some television work, and then I got my first Broadway show, only Broadway show, which was Sweet Charity with Gwen Verdon. Bob Foss is the original one. We opened at the Palace Theater, which is a wonderful experience because it had been closed for maybe, oh, I don't know, I don't know how many years, and so this was its big reopening, so it was a spectacular thing to be involved in, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in it for a year and a half, and I thought I made it to the top. I was just so happy in that show. And uh, one Friday night, before going into the show, I got a call from uh, the Steve Allen people who were out here in California, and they were just about to start uh, a show that was going to replace the Smothers Brothers, and it was called the Steve Allen Comedy Hour. And they were looking for someone to be opposite Jane Meadows, and uh, this was a Friday night, and they wanted me there on, a, on the next Monday morning. And, you know, so I had to go to Bob Fosse and Gwen Verdon and say, hey, this is what's happening. Do you think I should go? And they said, do you think you should go? That sounds fabulous. A series, a 10-week series, you know? And so I said, I will only go if I can come back to the show. And they said, you've got it. You can come back. So I came out, and the first week that I was here, doing the Steve Allen Comedy Hour, an agent that I had fired, his name was John Gaines, he got to be, to be a very big agent, but I fired him in New York. I won't tell you why, okay? And um, he said, you've got to see this man. You have got to audition for the show, Ruth. It's going to be a series, a NBC series. It's going to be fabulous. You've got to go. And so... Uh, I went, and that's the first time I met George Slaughter. He was all alone. We, he auditioned me in the bowels of, his, of a building. I can't even remember. I don't even think it was NBC. I don't even know where we were. But there was a piano there, a real old piano, and that was good because the two songs that I did, one I had written with a fella in New York City called Don't Futz Around, and we were two opera singers singing rock and roll for the first time. So I was singing the man's part, don't be sad, that's you and me, you know, that kind of a thing was a duet. And by my doing the man's part and my own part, it was extra funny, thank goodness. And then I did a duet that I had done in a review at the upstairs of the downstairs in New York City, which was a very posh New York City club. And that I did with uh, R.G. Brown, a song, a duet called Ode to Lady Bird, and it had a lot of bird calls in it. So by my doing his part and my part, again, it was doubly funny, which was great. And so he was a wonderful audience, and uh, he said, let me see your book. What else have you done? Everything, you know. So I showed him my book, and in the book that had all the summer stock shows that I had been in, I had been on the Gary Moore show, the original one with Dom DeLuise, uh, there was a character there that I did named Shakuntala, which was funnier probably than any character I've ever done, uh, thanks to Dom. And um, anyway, he saw a picture of me as Gladys Ormsby that I had taken. I had someone take a picture of me standing in a New York City waste paper basket that said, keep New York City clean. And he thought it was very funny that I had the funny brain to throw myself away. So uh, he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, look at that, that character, that's funny. He says, that's great. Uh, how does she talk? What, what does she do? How does she, what, you know, show me, show me. So I said, I'm talking like this, you know, and doing the thing, and that's great, that's great. And, and uh, he asked me about it, why is that? And I said, well, that's because that's how I played Agnes Gooch in Auntie Mame, in the first, in the, the original play, you know, not the musical. And the audience thought that I was so funny. There were about three times during the show when I did it for two weeks in Summerstock in Jennerstown, Pennsylvania, I had to turn around. I had to turn my back to the audience to stop them from laughing because when I was in New York City in a review, the first review I ever did called Misguided Tour, when people would laugh at me like crazy, the, the other performers would get jealous. 
And, and that hurt me so much that people would really start to become jealous of you being funny. I mean, that's one thing that, you know, for me, my feeling is that the funnier someone is that you're working with on stage or in front of a camera, then the funnier you're going to be. And a lot of people just don't want to handle that. I feel that uh, I connected and, and was a very good fit, so to say, for laughing uh, because I was so familiar with doing that kind of show. I mean, I did, like I say, 18 musical reviews. I was the review queen. <laughs> I really was. And uh, I just knew that kind of work and making up funny things in clubs where you had to do the show and more of the show. And because I didn't have a club act to pull from, it made your mind really, really work to make up funny things. And I was just, in I was just very, very comfortable in that form. And I still am. And I love it. In fact, I was so comfortable doing that form that after laughing was over a few years later because I did a lot more television work after laughing uh, uh, I did my own club act in a review form I had four guys you know with me on stage four very talented fellas and uh, I love the form and I love to see it it's just it's just pleasant to me before I had done laughing I had done enough different shows, especially the Gary Moore show with Dom and, and everything, that uh, I was very, very comfortable in the form. And I knew what, I was on the Carol Burnett show, The Entertainers. I had been on some hit shows. Um, the first month, I'd say, of laughing, I really didn't think it was any big special show. I didn't think it was a bomb, but I didn't have, it was like, oh, hum, it's wonderful, I'm working, I'm thrilled I'm working, and these are great people, and how nice, you know, we were just, everybody was very pleasant, and I thought, this is nice, you know. And then, all of a sudden, like that fifth or sixth week, when people started saying, hey, especially Gary Owens, he would always come in, he was great, with big reports, uh, you know, he was just the best, he was our newsman within the show. And he really started, you know, raising our eyebrows. Hey, wow, this is this is a hit. And then and then we really noticed it when we started going out to lunch and things and people would come for autographs and all that kind of thing and tearing our clothes off and, you know, all that kind of thing. And our wigs. It was just embarrassing. Totally embarrassing. <laughs> I always watch the show if I could. I think a show, if you can any show that you do, if you watch it. You can learn from it. You can learn, hey, wait a minute, I don't want to do that again, or oh, wow. You can really learn from doing a show. I enjoy, if I, if I make myself laugh, I know that was funny. I'm my worst critic. And, and I can laugh the hardest <laughs> in the room. If I'm funny, you will hear me laugh the hardest, which is kind of embarrassing at times, but I don't care. <laughs> you know, either something's funny or is this, and that was funny, folks. I was funny. <laughs> anyway, um, it's kind of strange because on a whole, I was a little critical of it to myself. I never know people. I was surprised that it was the hit that it was, to be truthful. But then again, I was jaded because I had done so many funny songs and so many sketches. Laughing sketches were very short next to what I was used to doing. You know what I'm saying? And um, what has been nice, what has been absolutely terrific is watching the reruns now because I had forgotten a lot of, of the lines and things that we had done. So now I'm watching it like you guys watched it. So I'm really enjoying it now much more than then. In watching it now, I'm still as critical. And some nights I walk away thinking, oh, wow, maybe it's not working now. But then the next day, I mean, we, sometimes it's on in the middle of the night or early, very early in the morning, and, and my husband will nudge me, oh, you got to see, this is just funny, you know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> what's great is to go out in the public now and have the people still raving. That's what's really been fabulous, that they're still raving about it. If they had allowed Dick Martin and myself to do two characters that the writers named the Swizzlers, and they were two stinking drunk characters, if they had allowed us to do those two characters every week, the way we did Gladys and, and, and Tyrone, I know that they also would have been 
as funny. But uh, NBC was really frightened, not frightened, I mean, they weren't going well, you know, <laughs> the NBC censors didn't want us to do things pertaining to uh, drinking every week. They said, no, no, so Dick and I could only do those characters maybe once every, I don't know, three months or four months. So it's, it was very interesting. I saw that even a character that wouldn't be really that hysterical, if it was shown every week, it could become very well liked. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, the power of TV is incredible. I used to love Foster Brooks because he also did the drunk character. And NBC would say no to us, no, no, you gotta cut, don't do it for a while. But then right away, boom, on the Flip Wilson show, he'd be on there doing the end. But I thought he was fabulous, don't get me wrong, but I thought, wait a minute, they're just, they don't know what they're, they're just afraid. NBC was afraid of a lot of stuff, you know? And, and uh, George would many times uh, put something a little extra racy in the script because the NBC people would be there during the readings and so the NBC people would go crazy over those things that he wanted them to go crazy about. So it took attention away from other stuff that was a little racy. <laughs> when the producers said to us, we're going to have you and Artie and your characters, Tyrone and Gladys, be married, we're going to do a whole big thing, I hated it instantly. I thought, no, this is wrong, wrong, wrong. But because I really am, folks, very nice to work with, very easy. You know, I, I just didn't want to be a pain and carry on or anything. And what are you going to do? So I did it. But I, I never liked doing it. I just saw it. I've seen it a couple times this year in reruns. And it just makes me crazy every time I see it. Just, I, I didn't think it was right. They were presented so simply on that bench. And it worked let well enough alone. Do you know what I'm saying? And then to go against all that and all of a sudden, you know, with her being such a prude, it's interesting. When I, I really found her rather boring to do. Does this surprise you folks? I didn't really, really enjoy doing Gladys because she was so one dimensional. The show made her very one dimensional all through the whole thing. Um, and, but I'm comparing it with what it was like doing the incredible role of Agnes Gooch and Auntie Mame. You know, which you know, many things happened, or including getting pregnant. It was so, so it was fun to do because of the audience loving it so much. That was the only fun of it to me. So you know, you'd think, well, now they're going to do more. No, I didn't like it. I just felt it was really wrong. But I didn't carry on, and Artie didn't either. If he had, we probably wouldn't have done it. George, Dick, and Dan always encouraged us to bring in any ideas that we might have or anything that we had done in any other shows or anything uh, to look at and, and if it was good enough, if we could, uh, they'd do it on the show. And the two, sh the two songs that I auditioned, we did them on the show and they came out very, very funny. Uh, Ode to Lady Bird I did alone and, and, and because of the wonderful costumes that we had, you know, uh, uh, Rhett Turner, and Michael Travis created great things. I had a wonderful, funny bird thing on my head when I did Ode to Lady Bird. And uh, it's funny. And then I did with Artie, Don't Futz Around, and those were great costumes. So after doing them in a cheap little club in New York, you know, with no costumes really, uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was just delightful to redo those numbers on an NBC show. It was just great. But no, they encouraged us to bring things in. They were very open. In joining that show and seeing the production value of the show, it was just incredible. And you knew you were working on a show that was top of the line, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and in turn, I think that ruined a couple of other shows that were done years later. I won't mention the name, but my husband, who was performing at that time, was on a show that was shot out of uh, Nashville. And they had, they had the top country pro performers on that show. It was, it was a wonderful show, good material. I went down there to see the last taping, you know, the last show that he taped. And because they had all the people come in with all their own clothes, it just, I thought, this, is, this show isn't going to make it. What a shame. Because of the production value, this show is not going to make it. And I know that's why. Because shows like ours ruined it for other shows. I just know that. In the late 60s, there was a wonderful evangelist on TV 
on the, on the West Coast, I don't even think she was on the East Coast, called Catherine Coleman. And she had a wonderful piano player on there called Dino. And she would announce that Dino was on. And Catherine was so dramatic and so way out in her delivery of her own lines that I, she was funny to me. And I'd go into laughing and say, did you see Catherine Coleman? Yeah, yeah, she's funny. So it got to be a thing that we all watched within the show. And um, because she had a long face, I thought, shoot, I can do this lady. I'll get them to get me a wig that's like her own hair and everything, and I can do this lady. So I went to George, and I said, George, if we can get the writers to do a, do a sketch on Catherine that is far from religion, you know, I don't know what the situation would be, I would love to do her. And uh, he said, let me present it to the writers. So they came up with a, with a, a sketch, and then in turn, it, it worked out so well, they sent a note to her and had her watch it, and she sent me a note, and she was fabulous. And it was such a big hit, it, and I realized that People didn't see her back east, but because she was so funny, and she, it was a funny character. And because of that, when I did my club act a few, few years after the show was over, I did her in my club act, and it worked every night in spades because it was just a, you know, a way off kind of lady. But what's interesting is that just a year ago, uh, I was in Beverly Hills with my husband, waiting to go into a restaurant to, for dinner, and there was Dino the piano player, and his wife, she, absolutely beautiful lady. And uh, they have a show that they've been doing for a couple of years now down in Branson. We are now friends. We go down to Branson, we saw this show. They're a fabulous couple, and that's all because of Catherine Coleman. <laughs> oh Laverne Blossom was just a character that the writers created and of course I put my whole twist to her and I picked out the wig. You know what's very very nice also about being on Laugh and both especially Michael Travis almost almost all the characters that I did uh, you might say that I clothed, clothed them. They would let me go into the wardrobe room. He would always be with me, Michael would and I would say even though ahead of time I didn't have any idea what the character should look like, I would say, so let's try that, let's try that, let's, you know, we'd go along, we'd yank the stuff. And then what always makes a funny character good is how you do the hair. That's why I look funny today. I'm a character today. <laughs> um, but that's what happened with Laverne, you know what I'm saying? And it just, because I can't think of any lines, or we did it so little. Do you know what I'm saying? I can't be specific now, but I love doing that character. It was the, the best show that I have ever been on as far as atmosphere is concerned. Uh, you know, when, when, like Saturday Night Live is known for, oh, party, drugs, and but who knows? You know, who really knows? But I guess some no, a lot of naughty stuff went on there. I don't know. I never guessed it on the show. But... On our show, uh, there was one person that had a problem, but that was that person's problem, and phew, I never saw it happen. And and uh, we, it was just good, healthy fun. I loved going <clears throat> to the to the uh, rehearsals, and that's where we had probably more fun than even on the sets. You know, when we started taping the show. <clears throat> Alan Seuss is probably one of the funniest people you would ever want to work with. I can remember one time laughing so hard at something that he said to all of us at rehearsal. I laughed so hard, I mean it. I actually was on the floor holding my stomach. I mean, now that's corny. That's cartoon corny, but it is the truth. Uh, but, but it goes on down the line. Artie was very funny. We just It was just a wonderful group of people who thought funny and who knew how to have a nice time working together. And then, uh, you know, but, but of course, we would have like, for instance, our choreographer who had to direct all these musical numbers that we had named Hugh Lambert. We had some before him, but uh, Hugh Lambert, by the, by the way, met Nancy Sinatra Jr. on the show. 
and they they got married after a while, which we thought was wonderful that they met on our show. You know what I'm saying? He was a wonderful man, and uh, but he was very stern, you know, and okay, everybody, let's straighten out. And you know, when we were with George, the, there came a point where he would have to say, okay, everybody, quiet down, let's get to it. But uh, it was just a terrific show to to work on, just fun. I mean, everybody really, really was nice. But my memory of Tony Curtis and Peter Lawford, they sort of came in at the same uh, couple of weeks or so, you know, back, back to back. They were such gentlemen and yet funny and fun and professional with doing their lines and parts and everything. I just was really so impressed with them. And one person that I was really impressed with was Joe Namath who you don't think of as being a, a, a performer on a variety show, you know, a football player. He came in, he wasn't sickening at all, he knew his part, you know, but again, gentleman, sense of humor, fun to work with, totally relaxed, do you know what I'm saying, just as relaxed I guess he would be on a football field. He really impressed me. Oh, oh I could go on and on, but that's just an idea. Another great person to work with, a guest that came on laughing, was Debbie Reynolds. Uh, the writers wrote several sketches of us being funny, horrible, slovenly looking stewardesses on Burbank Airlines. And of course they made the inside of the airlines, you know, the, the, the plane and everything. Oh, the production value that they did on that was great. And we had more fun and laughs. I mean, oh, I mean, going back to laughs while doing that kind of thing, I can remember sometimes, you know, with even amongst the cast, never mind the guests, uh, this a couple of times that Joanne and I did stuff together that we were laughing so hard we were crying. During laughing, or near the end of it, uh, Frank Glicksman, who produced Medical Center, told me that he knew that I could do, he could just see in my work, that I also could be a dramatic actress. And I had done a lot of dramatic work in, in stock and things like that. So, I mean, I went to the Bassinia Playhouse College of Theater Arts and you do all kinds of things, so I, I, I certainly had all that experience. And I love doing that kind of thing. And uh, so he said, I want to put you on one of our shows. So he cast myself opposite Don Rickles, and we had dramatic parts on Medical Center. There again, you talk about having fun in a cast with Chad Everett. He was fabulous to work with. And the three of us, during the, doing all this dramatic stuff, we were crying, laughing. Of course, because of Rickles and his jokes, you know what I'm saying? But um, hey, what are you going to do? I mean, I'm known for being funny, and so most of the producers, you know, want to hire you funny. Now, all during laughing, I guessed it on a lot of other shows. Probably, I really believe, I guessed it on all the variety shows that were going more than anybody on our show. And, uh, you know, I did many Flip Wilson shows, which was just down the, down the hallway. I did many uh, Dean Martin variety shows. This was before all the roasts that I did. And then I'd go over to CBS and I did the later Carol Burnett and Friends show, several of those, many. Uh, uh, Leslie Uggams show, uh, the Sesame Street show. It was interesting uh, being on Sesame Street in comparison with laughing, because Sesame Street, let's face it, that's a big hit show. and have been, you know, very, po very powerful. Uh, but it still was more fun being on Laughing because on Sesame Street, they, they didn't understand the importance of rehearsals. And as good as the show was, if they had really rehearsals for all the sketches and everything, those things could have been even far better. You know what I'm saying? Even if you were in a production number, you would, in your apartment, you would get a, a tape with what key you're going to sing it in, and that's it. You practice with the tape alone at home. You don't go in and work with a piano player. It takes a lot of the fun out of everything. And then on the day you're going to tape that number, you go in and do the number. ba ba up ba 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 folks. Do you know what I'm saying? Whole different thing. Wonderful people, smart people, incredible writers, incredible music, incredible songs. That's why I love doing the show, but the whole thing was lost with very little rehearsal. Do you know what's happening? Because of 
laugh and being on television again in its one spot on trio for now having people get all excited again that I meet it's bringing back such wonderful wonderful memories that I it, it's making me very happy and proud of the work that I've done and and that makes me feel good mm -hmm.